please take note that at the end of today's video, the recipe will be scrolling. Enjoy! Hi! Welcome to A Chef Called Rhonda. I'm Rhonda and this is my kitchen. And today, I'm going to be showing you how to make the traditional Italian breakfast cookie, also known as the S, as in Sicilian cookie. Yes, the Italian breakfast cookie, also known as the S cookie, hails from Sicily and brought to the entire world. Now, little tip, Italians traditionally don't make a big deal or fuss out of breakfast. They don't spend a lot of time whisking eggs and pancakes. The traditional Italian breakfast consists of hot steaming coffee and a couple of cookies. That sounds like a spoiled, doesn't it? Well, it is truly a grand breakfast. Now, you also may have heard that Italians eat croissants for breakfast, and that is true, but generally that happens when they are on vacation. And at home, do as the Romans do and grab a cookie for breakfast. I'll be showing you how to make the traditional Italian breakfast cookie, the S cookie. This recipe will yield approximately 40 cookies and they will have a shelf life and can be frozen. So let's grab our trusty wooden spoons, let's all meet back in the kitchen, and let's learn how to make the traditional Italian breakfast cookie, the S cookie. We're in the kitchen. I have my mappina, I have that hooked in my pocket. And just to talk a little bit about the ingredients today, super easy, four and a half cups of all-purpose flour, I have about two and a half teaspoons of baking powder, good quality baking powder. I have just about a teaspoon of salt, um, and that's my dry ingredients. And the first step in the process is to sift my dry ingredients together. So I have my very large preparation bowl here, and I have my little sifter. It's very simple, very minimalist. I have one cup of white granulated sugar, a cup of the light, and this is important to note, it's not the extra virgin olive oil, it's the light olive oil. In an effort to save time, I grated one medium to large orange. Can you see that? And the zest, I have a little tip for how you should zest your orange. I left it nice and thick. And I'll speak more about um, how to attain that nice, um, bigger bite when zesting the orange. And I have about a quarter cup of my milk. I have four room temperature eggs. And I have one additional egg for the, and the coveted secret, grandma's tip here. I have one and a half teaspoons of anise extract. And that's the organic anise extract. Okay, so super simple recipe. These cookies are loved by many across the world. They're great breakfast cookies. The cookie renders out with a nice toasty shell. They should be golden brown, but very soft inside. And cominciamo. What does cominciamo mean? Let's get started. Cominciamo. I have my four and a half cups of my flour, baking powder here. And I'm gonna add a little bit of the baking powder into my measuring cup. Add the salt. And I'm going just a couple of minutes, just you know, sifting now flour and our baking powder. And if you notice any lumps, you can go ahead and fix that. Okay, so we have our dry ingredients sifted. I'm going to put them here on our preparation area. We'll begin to make our batter preparation bowl and a wire whisk. Not far behind is our trusty wooden spoon. We'll be making these cookies authentically by hand, not utilizing any mixer. So stay tuned and listen. Four eggs. One, two. I have my four eggs. So I've cracked my four eggs. And now I'm going to take the tip of my whisk and prior to whisking anything, I'm going to pop my yolks. One, two, three. Four. Grandma taught me pop the yolks for a more even and consistent batter throughout. To add my one cup of white granulated sugar. Ooh. To just gently start to whisk the egg into the sugar, gently, gently. 
Nothing overly handed here, just for about 30 seconds. Just like so. Light olive oil, olive oil. My orange zest. I use the cheese grater on the thickest setting by hand. By grating the orange zest thickly, you'll see the specks of the orange within the cookie. And you'll have that bold flavor from the zest coupled with the anise. I'm going to add our anise. Ooh, smells so good. About a minute, a minute and a half. Okay, and you just want to make sure your eggs are incorporated nicely. My dry ingredients back here on the preparation uh, area. And what I'm going to do is take my trusty wooden spoon and I'm going to make a well in this bowl. I'm going to take the trusty wooden spoon and I'm just going to push along, along the sides of the preparation bowl, I'm going to make a this well. This is an important tip here. Making a well and preparing your bowl is key. Is slowly we're going to add our wet ingredients into the dry ingredients. Little by little and we will start to form the dough. We have about a quarter cup of milk here and we will use it sparingly to bring everything together. I also have a little remaining flour that I put aside. About it comes together, we can bring it onto our cutting board and knead it for about a half minute. And of course, I have my one additional egg for our egg wash. Okay, so it's time now to our wet ingredient. It smells heaven. And I'm going to take my wooden spoon. This step requires a little bit of elbow grease. You just want to incorporate flour that is up on the sides of the bowl. You want to bring towards the center and you're using the the front of the spoon at this point. You're just adopting all of that flour into that wet mixture. And it should appear a little crumbly at first. Now I'll make another well and I will add our remaining egg mixture. And we want to get every bit of that, every bit been following a chef called Rhonda, I thank you so very much. The quality silicone spatula is second to none in your pantry. So if you haven't purchased a sil silicone spatula, I would consider doing so. Um, they work perfectly. Okay, so we've added the remains of our egg mixture to the flour. So we're mixing all these ingredients together. And I'm using the spoon and I'm turning now, okay? I'm turning. And just as the flour becomes coated, I'm going to now get in there with my hands, silicone spatula, and make sure I get every bit of that goodness out of our preparation bowl onto our flour. We don't want to miss any of the egg batter. So we did all we can do with our tools, our trusty wooden spoon as well as our silicone spatula. Now it's time to get in with our hands and really formulate that dough. Key tip here, it's important not to over mix the dough. Okay, we just want to bring it together. So I'm going to come in and I'm going to just grab everything from the sides that perhaps the the spoon and the spatula omitted to grab. By utilizing your hands you can really get a feeling as to when the cookie dough is starting to form. Again, we do not want to over mix. Maybe a half teaspoon just so it doesn't stick too much. And I'm going to take our cookie dough to knead it. You can feel it. So what do I mean by knead? I use the base of my palms here and I press down and then I will fold over my dough about a minute, minute and a quarter, so that you can identify the orange zest and what I was meaning there. So that's that right there. That is our S cookie dough. Can you see the bits of orange? See that? Can you see that? Next step in the process, I'm going to wrap the cookie dough in a piece of plastic. I am going to utilize a piece of plastic, ordinary kitchen plastic, and I'm just going to put a little bit of flour to refrigerate 
for about 45 minutes. The longer you let the cookie dough sit in the, in the refrigerator, the more enhanced the flavors will become and the better the S cookie. We have our dough. It's nice and chilled. And I did allow this dough to chill for about 45 I minutes. I to show you what I have on my preparation board. I have a little reserved all-purpose flour uh, to add to our cutting board. I have one egg, the additional one egg, and that's for our egg wash. And I have just about a tablespoon of water. Create that egg wash now. Okay, and I'll just uh, add a dollop of water. And this will become our egg wash. Add a little bit of the all-purpose flour to my board. At this and time, I'd like to take a moment and say many thanks to all my subscribers. If you haven't subscribed to A Chef Called Rhonda, please would you consider subscribing? It's always healthy, always delicious, and always fun. All right, well, there's that dough. Mm. Oh, big flavor, big flavor here. Okay, so I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of all-purpose flour on top of the dough. About an inch of dough, and I'm just going to make a little log about seven inches, six and a half to seven inches long. I have two baking sheets already parchment lined. You can see them here. And this recipe will make about 40 cookies. So I'm going to go about seven, seven inches and I'll bring, I'll bring up the log close. Can you and see the that? method or the trick here to making that S is to, so you wanna bring both ends into the center, opposite ends into the center and it makes that S. It's pretty basic. So I'm just going to turn it here and like so, the seven inch ropes, if you will. And I'm just cutting some of the ends off so they look a little bit more finished on each end. And I'm just going to turn them one at a time, like so, forming that S cookie. I take a little bit of dough, about one inch dough, and I start to just give a little bit of the heat from my hand to roll it into that log. But let me talk a little bit about the dough. So once we start to form our log or snake, seven and a half inches or so, you want to make sure it's even throughout as you roll. So you want to roll from the center outwards. Okay. And you can see this this one's large, so I'll get two S cookies. I'll, I'll remove the ends so it has a nice edge, and I'll cut it in the center. And you can tell I have two in the making S cookies, two. One is moving in towards the center, toward you. Okay, and so we'll go through this process until the dough is no more. S cookies, super cookies, or sweet cookies, right? S for Sicily. Yeah, Sicily. Oh, manja. Dolce vita. What does dolce vita mean? Can anybody comment to me what dolce vita means? The good life? Yeah, the sweet life. Dolce dessert, right? Okay, let's continue to make our S cookies. A um, couple of notes. I wanted to thank all my subscribers. I wanted to say hi to all my subscribers. And if you haven't already subscribed to a chef called Rhonda, please would you consider doing so? It's always healthy, always delicious, and always fun. In addition to your holiday cookie trays, the S cookie. I'm rolling, rolling, rolling here. And you can see the dough is so nice to work with. It's smooth and just work out from the center towards the end because you want you want your cookies to be and you can see this rope see that rope that one's long look at that again i'm going to trim the ends just to make it nice and neat and then i'm going to cut seven inches seven inches and be certain you can go in and re-roll again um and my grandmother used to have us i have me roll them all out and then she'd come in and we would do the s's and it becomes second nature, right? So she had her methodology of making it. For purpose of explaining how to make it, I think it's good that you see it individually. Um, again, here's our seven inch, and I'm going to take the bottom and, and curl it into the center. Likewise, the top, I'm going to curl it in toward me, and thus making an S. So if you like a mild, sweet breakfast cookie, this would be your go-to recipe here. Oven is preheated to 375, and the cookie will 
will bake for about 10 to 12, maybe 13 minutes, depending on your oven. Should be golden brown on the bottom, slightly golden on top, and just let your fingers glide over. So it's not pressing, that'll come later. Um, because we will gently press our S cookies when they're on our baking sheet um, just a little bit just to give them that authentic look. So you see how nice that rope comes? There we are and you can see the bits of orange. Yay! Bottom and then the top all come toward me. So I'm going, I'm curling out the tail of the cookie and then the top of the rope I'm curling in toward me. That's my notes. Uh, they should be about two inches apart uh, from each other on the baking tray uh, because they will spread. So to make mention, I know in the recipe when I had the ingredients preparation area and I was showing you, I did have a quarter cup of milk, but it, the milk is only necessary if, if it looks like the dough isn't coming together for whatever reason. Um, I keep that on the side. And in today's recipe, in fact, I didn't even need to use the quarter cup of milk. have finished with our ropes and I'm going to bring them up close to you so that you can see them. These are the ropes, also known as the beginnings of our F's cookie, the Italian breakfast cookie. Can you see the little bits of orange? We noted you'll need about four pans. That's our first half. 13 minutes. Anywhere between 10 and 13 minutes. You want them golden brown on the bottom and just ever so slightly a pale yellow on top. The bottom tail goes outward for the bottom portion of the S and the top comes into you. And very simple. So grandmother used to say that to make your ropes first is pretty much the efficient method. And again, we're spacing them on our baking sheet. Um, they'll get a little dry, so if you need to re-roll slightly and just form it, Again, I used my pastry cutter to even out the ends. We'll continue to do this until we are full of S cookies. Super sweet, super delicious, sensational Sicilian S cookies. Continue to paint the cookies, the S cookies, very gingerly. And this, after this process of painting them and giving them that egg wash bath, I will then press them down ever so gently with my hands onto the cookie sheet um, just to give them that authentic old look. Fakusi, 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 do like this. Fakusi, fakusi, do like so. All right, and so we'll just, the egg wash will help to give the cookie that nice sheen, that nice finished look. And my Oven is already preheated to 375, so we're good to go there. Okay. Okay. And there we are. Our right. step, we're just ever so gently going to press the cookies with our hands. Ever so gently. Ever so gently. Just pressing them. A little, little, a bit. A little, little, a bit. Press. Press the cookie. Here's a look at our cookies, completely egg washed and in preparation of going into the oven, which has been preheated to 375 degrees, and they'll bake for about 12 to 13 minutes, depending on your oven. So they should look a little pale yellow on top and a golden brown on the bottom. Uh, the cookie will render a soft inside texture with a nice crunchy bottom um, and they get better with age. They will last up to two weeks in a nice cookie tin. Well, we are finito. Our S cookies are completely done and they look and smell heavenly. I wanted to bring them up real close to you so you can see each one has that unique S shape and let me lift one up for you. You can see how the tops are just lightly toasted but the bottom is golden brown can you see that well that is our traditional italian breakfast this cookie, cookie is considered a tradition 
all across Italy and brought here to America by many grandmas, of course. Well, the moment of truth, trusty wooden spoon in hand, it's time to take that taste test. First, let's take a little smell. Oh, heavenly. We break it in half. It's crunchy on the outside and soft in the inside. Let's take that taste test. Mmm. It's a little cup of pop. Mm. Hang on. Oh my god. So good. Not too sweet. And the taste of the orange and the anise coupled with the hot coffee is perfect. If you haven't subscribed to a chef called Rhonda, please would you consider doing so? These cookies make a wonderful gift. They'll last a long time in your freezer of a sweet treat. Mm. Incredible. I hope you have a chance. Hang on. <laughs> I hope you have a chance to try these cookies. They're wonderful, fabulous. From my kitchen to yours, it's always healthy, always delicious, and always fun. Thank you for joining me today in making this traditional breakfast cookie, the S cookie. Many, many thanks. Hi to all my subscribers. Comment to me, email me, I'll get back to From you. From my kitchen to yours, I bid you arrivederci, dolce vita. Bravo. Perfecto. Bye. Bye. Chindang. Salute. Until we meet again.